I got these animals on a bit of bloat medication. I feed this, uh, I'm still feeding this uh, Bova Tech, uh, I forgot, or Bova Creep or something like that. But I'm feeding it to them. Uh, so the last couple days, I have actually been seeing a stage two bloat in my animals. Okay, so stage three is uh, they are on the verge of death. And stage two is when they are uh, very, very, very swollen. Uh, uh, stage three is uh, it's like they are on the verge of death. But stage two, it's like they are uh, uh, physically sh uh, showing a lot of gas. They, uh, when I get an opportunity to do so, maybe I could take a picture of it. And oh man, this animal has a lot of diarrhea on her. I got to figure out what's going on with that. She has a lot of diarrhea. You can tell uh, she's got... Uh, Look at the rear ends of the other animal and then look at the rear end of this animal. Maybe she got something, uh, uh, who knows what's going on. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But she has a lot of diarrhea on her butt. She may have just caught something like a E. coli or salmonella or something like that. Um, I'll have to keep an eye on her. Uh, but if she's got a lot of diarrhea on her butt, uh, these animals, I am seeing that these animals are having a lot of bloat issues. A lot of bloat issues they are walking around on the grass and they're eating it and it's uh, causing them to bloat very badly to the point where i actually go uh well i've been having to pull the animals off of the grass like these animals they haven't been on the grass for at least though uh, i would say uh oh 10 to 12 hours uh, but maybe about 12 hours i've kept them off the grass they haven't uh, hardly ate they haven't ate anything for about the last 12 hours and so I'm about to let them out on the grass again. Yesterday I did get my fur, uh, the, the field fertilized. And uh, yep, uh, I got some major bloat issues going on with my animals. But this animal right here, this one right here, this one right here, this one right here, and then that one on the end right there. There are the four animals going to market this uh, uh, this month. Either I'm gonna take them to market at the end of the month in January, or I'm gonna take them to market at the uh, in the uh, beginning to middle of February. And so the four that I'm taking to market, they don't have ear tags. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. And uh, I would anticipate that on these four animals, I'm gonna make somewhere around five thousand to fifty-five hundred dollars. That that would be my guess. And so right now. Uh, in terms of just the business side of things, in jail, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, doing all that well for myself right now. Uh, when I uh, look at my feed trough setup, I mean, it's easy to see that I'm not anywhere near capacity. Like when I look at the, uh, when I look at how many feed troughs I have, when I look at how much grass is on my field, when I look at how much feed stuffs I got in storage, I'm not anywhere near capacity. But I told myself, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, as I get things rolling, uh, you know, I'll have more animals here. And, uh, you know, because a part of me, it's like when I look at my finances and I'm like, man, I'm going to do a, maybe I'll do a 9,000 this month. You know, uh, maybe I'll do about nine, 10,000. And then, in, uh, you know, I'm, you know, uh, when all things are considered by about, by about May in about four or five months, I'll probably make about fifty, sixty thousand $60,000. And it's like, oh man, uh, well, I told myself not to think like this because I remember, uh, you know, I was like, man, if I had my farm running at full capacity, I would be doing double that, right? I would be doing double. And I told myself, don't think like that. You know, uh, I've been through a lot. And uh, and as I get these things rolling, it, it'll just work out just fine. I don't have to, you know, because I always, you know, one, I think it's like the whole thing that once I've seen it, I can't unsee it, right? Like I've seen my farm make you know, 30, uh, 25, $30,000 a month. I've seen it, right? I've seen it. It's not some imaginary thing. I have seen it before and I remember it. I remember it vividly. And so when I look at my bank account and I'm like, man, I, you know, I'm not doing very well for myself. I, I you know, this month, maybe I do a nine, 10,000 in the next five months, maybe I do about 50, 60,000. But if I had my farm running at full capacity, I could be doing 20,000. But I told myself, don't worry about it. You know, don't even think about it like that. I just, uh, I just got to keep on going. And so, uh, here uh, in about, uh, well, I would like to say this weekend, I would like to start buying more animals, but I'm gonna have to see. Because if it rains on Friday, if it rains here on Friday, 
I won't be able to bring in animals on Saturday because if it rains on Friday and I bring in animals on Saturday, I won't be able to pull my trailer back here. It'll be too wet. My, my truck will get stuck. And so, uh, yeah, but in terms of the in terms of the business side of things, so over uh, here in about five, uh, within about five months, I'll probably do about 50, 60,000. I'll probably make about 50, 60,000 dollars. If my farm was, uh, when my farm is running at full capacity, I would anticipate that my numbers double. That I would do about, I would make about 20,000 dollars a month. Uh, you know, uh, do I think that I, you know, uh, uh, I got, I'm probably not going to uh, go uh, make a, a, you know, like when things were really good, when things were really good, the cattle market was very high and I had a lot of animals go ready to go to market and uh, I had, a, uh, uh, I was making, you know, when things were real good, maybe I made about 32000 a month. I made about 32000 and uh, like right now, um, uh, Right now, even at maximum capacity, I'm not going to run my farm at maximum, maximum capacity because it's a balancing act. It's really, it's a balancing act. It's not just like I bring in animals, I throw foo-foo dust on them, and then all of a sudden I make money, right? That's not how the world works. I have to, I have to anticipate, uh, there, there are a lot of things that go on. Like I have to anticipate the weather. I have to anticipate the biomass accumulation of my grass on the field. I have to anticipate my resources. I have to plan for a lot of things. It's not just uh, I bring in animals. Boom, you know, I, th I throw some magical fairy dust on them and then and the money just starts flooding into my bank account. That's not how the world works at all. There's a lot that goes on into it. And, for, you know, a lot of people, I think that it's just like anything else. The only way for people to really understand how difficult it is to do what I do is to go and do it themselves. Because a lot of people, they will freaking wreck themselves when they see how hard this is. They will. They genuinely will. Because farming... It's not just raising cattle. It's not just growing grass. You know, it's raising cattle, growing grass, investment portfolios, business strategies. I mean, there's a lot that goes on to it. And, you know, there's a lot, a lot. And a lot of people, it's easy to just sit there and go, oh, uh, you know, oh, man, this guy, whatever, right? It's easy to do that. But at the end of the day, and that's also one thing about money. And that's also one thing about money is because money is objective. Money is objective. People, um... Uh, no matter what they say, all oh, this, whatever, oh, you know, whatever, whatever, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking adorable, oh man, I fell out of heaven a seven, oh man, I'm some, uh, I'm some magical gift to the earth. But if they don't got any money in their bank account, they don't have any money in their bank account. It, it don't matter what they say, and money is objective. If I have, you know, if I have a check for seven thousand five hundred dollars, when I take it to the bank and, and deposit that check. I will have $7,500 in my bank account. If I'm making $7,500 a week, I'm making $7,500 a week. Opinions go out the window. Uh, you know, money is not subjective. Money is objective. And the people who make money are the people who make money. And the people who don't make money don't make money. It just is what it is. Money is a number in the bank account. And so when I look at my farm and I look at, when I look at my animals and I, and you know, uh, uh, I don't know how much I'm going to get paid. I don't know. But I would anticipate that when I look at my animals, you know, I would anticipate that I make somewhere around five grand on them. And then I'd probably hold on to them for about one more month. Uh, these animals, like uh, the smallest one, I mean, they're still just a little bit skinny. Uh, not, not a little bit skinny. They're just still a little bit too light. This is the lightest one out of the bunch. Her right here with the light brown coat. She's the lightest one out of the bunch. And I want her to put on some more weight. And so I would anticipate that here in about a month, in about a month to a month and a half, you can see, uh, look at the body difference between her and her. Here in about a month to a month and a half, about the end of January, about the middle, beginning of February, these animals, uh, I would anticipate that they're somewhere, all somewhere around an average weight of 800 pounds. But they're gonna. Uh, I would think that it's gonna about take about another month, and so uh, the end of January, middle of February, somewhere around that time, I'll take them to the market. I have plenty of grass. If it rains two more times for the month, I'll have enough grass to feed all of these animals for the rest of, for the remainder of the time. And so grass is not what I'm worried about. Um, realistically, if I was running out of grass, I would know 
because I would start running out of grass in the front yard in, in a in a uh, worst case like in a scenario where I'm like uh I need to do something my grass is uh you know uh, I need to put these animals on a more uh, strict uh, uh, a feeding schedule I need to put them on some more of a controlled feeding schedule if I need to put these animals on a controlled feeding schedule what usually is happening is that the grass in the field the grass in the back is dead the grass in the back is gone the animals are uh, are complaining because they don't have any food they'll you know they'll, they'll stand at the fence and they'll complain and they'll complain because they don't have any food they'll just lay around all day they won't be they won't go around grazing because there's there's nothing to graze they'll, they'll just uh, give up and they'll just lay there uh, they'll, they'll just lay there at, at the at the front and so when I see that behavior I will start rationing the grass in the front I'll let the animals out on the front and I'll time it I'll time it and I'll say okay uh I'll, uh, I'll let them eat as much as they want. Usually the first day I'll let them eat as much as they want and I'll time it. And then the next day what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll uh, put them on a controlled feeding schedule. So maybe I'll let them out for 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. And then I'll also feed them a total mixed ration. I'll give them a mixed ration of something like a 65% uh, the, the, uh, the rough estimate for the numbers is about 65% TDN. So what I'm looking to do, uh, depending on their weight, if they're, if they're somewhere around 750 pounds, if they're somewhere around 750, uh, if they're somewhere around uh, 750 pounds, I'll give them about a 12% protein. I'll give them about 12% protein, 65% TDN. And if they're lighter, if they're lighter, I'll give them about 65% TDN. If they're about two and a half weight, about 250 pounds, I'll give them 65% TDN and about 14% 14, 14 protein. And so depending on what the animal weighs, and I'll also give them a vitamin pack. I'll give them a vitamin pack depending on what grain I feed them. Because if I feed them whole corn, if I feed them whole corn, and uh, you know, whole corn is a lot of energy, low protein, uh, high phosphorus, low calcium. And so I'll, I'll mix in a, uh, an all-around multivitamin pack, and I'll, uh, I'll feed them a multivitamin pack with a 4 to 1 calcium phosphorus ratio. And so you know, it, like I would know if the animals are uh, are running out of stuff to eat, they I, I would know because of their behavior would exhibit it. I, when I look at them, they they would they would be acting like they don't have any food. And so at that point, I would start rationing the grass in the front. And when I start rationing the grass in the front, I would also provide them a total mixed ration. And so uh, here uh, this weekend, if I can, it, it, or not if I can, I mean I can. But the uh, the weather, uh, I don't, I won't be able to bring uh, animals back here if it's raining. If the ground is wet, I won't be able to do it. And so, I would like to start. I need to start bringing in more animals. Oh, uh, the three bulls in the front—they're doing perfectly fine. They are visibly growing. They're visibly growing, and uh, they they look good. And so, I'm actually looking at them right now, and they look good. And uh, so I need to go and bring in more animals. And I need to get my farm running at more of an optimum capacity. And when I get my farm running, you know, you know realistically, even at what well, I mean, but I, you know, I'm going to be honest with myself, even at $10,000 a month, like I know that this is not an optimal situation, right? Like I could definitely be doing better for myself. And I think that that is deep down, that is what is bothering me the most. Is I, 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 can, I can be doing better for myself right now financially, but I told myself, you know, don't, don't think like that. You know, gotta be disciplined, right? I gotta stick to my plan. I gotta stick to the plan. And the re I made the plan for a reason. Like, I don't just want to bring in 20 animals and go, oh, man, you know, and then now I'm running around trying to precondition 20 animals at one time. And I got a tiny little uh, pen over there. And now I got to precondition 20 animals at, at one time. I don't want to be in that situation. That's why I've made these plans, right? I bring them in five at a time. I take care of them. I precondition them for two weeks and then I let them out. That, that you know, I've made the plans for a reason, right? The plans exist for a reason. Oh, this ain't some uh, foo foo dust magical adventure land, you know. Uh, 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 you know, uh, it's not some uh, some some you know magical journey adventure land time. It's not. You know, uh, the, you know, uh, I made the plans for a reason. I don't want to bring in twenty animals and then have to precondition twenty animals, and then uh, you know, if one animal gets sick, I don't notice it, and that one animal gets three animals sick, and now I'm sitting in a situation where I got a sick pen full of you know five animals. I don't want to be in that situation. 
That's why, you know, a lot of these animals, when they first get sick, it's hard to tell. If you have 20 animals, it's hard to tell if one of them is sick. And if one of them is sick, it can get three of them sick. And so that is why I'm bringing them five in five at a time. And that is also why I would suggest, uh, you know, you know, at the end of the day, people can do whatever they want. And I'm just, the way I do it is I put five animals in a pen. Maybe up to seven, five to seven at a time. Because if I have five to seven at a time and they're all standing there, I can tell if an animal is sick at that point. If there's 20 of them, I can't really tell. If there's 20 of them and they're all running around all over the place and they're all mixing up everywhere and... I, I can't tell I, I honestly it's hard to tell at that point and so if I have five to seven animals in a pen at a time and they're all just standing there at that point I can tell and uh, my my, uh, my holding pen for the new animals is situated in a way that I can funnel the animals into the working chute immediately uh, I can just push them into the working chute immediately I don't have to like run around and chase my animals around and push them over into this corner of the of the of the property and then and then and then funnel them. I don't have to do that stuff anymore I just have them in the working pen and I just push them straight back to the uh, I push them straight back to the working pen from the holding pen and so here in about oh uh, I would say it's gonna take me uh three to four weeks but in three to four weeks I or excuse me um uh, not three to four weeks uh three three to four uh if i had to bring in cattle three to four times oh man that's a lot of I, i'm gonna be selling five cattle i'm gonna be selling four cattle in the next month month and a half so that would put me at uh 17 animals and then i bring in uh five more that'd be 22 20 yeah i mean it's like a give and take it's like i'll bring in new animals sell old animals bring in new animals sell old animals and at the end of the day, I would anticipate that when my farm is running at maximum capacity, I would be making somewhere around $15,000 a month. And, uh, you know, uh, the thing that upsets me the most, I think that, that it aggravates me the most, is that I understand that I could be doing better for myself. But I tell myself not to think like that. You know, like I, but even, but then I tell myself reasonably, even at $10,000 a month, I can do whatever I want. Like even at ten thousand dollars a month, I pr I practically just have money sitting in my account. I don't have to worry about it, right? I don't have to worry about money. At the end of the day, even if I just you know sat here and ran my farm like this, at uh, at sixty seventy percent capacity, and I just I just sat here doing a sixty percent capacity, seventy percent capacity, I could still make my ten grand a month. And if I made my ten grand a month, I I ultimately have more money uh, even at ten thousand dollars a month i have more money than than i could i could use realistically right e even at ten thousand and so it's not a big deal financially for me in the in the grand scheme of things it just it uh it aggravates me that i understand that i can do better for myself it really does you know when i look at my grass and, and you know i got enough grass back there to easily feed 50 animals you know, and then I got I got a barn full of I got a barn full of hay. I got a shipping container full of corn. I got money just sitting in an account. It, you know, I look at this stuff every day, and I'm like, man, you know, I I understand that I could do a lot better for myself, but in a way, I am doing the best for myself. From from my understanding, as of right now, I am doing the best for myself. I am. There's a reason that I do things this way. You know, if you know, I you know, I don't want to turn my uh, my my field into some uh, some crazy fiesta, right? I mean, it's like, oh my god, I got forty animals running around in all directions. I don't know which one's which. You know, I, I don't want to be in that situation. One of them's got a contagious disease, and now they're all jam packed. I don't I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be in that situation, and that's why I'm doing things this way. But yesterday, oh. Uh, I got this little, uh, I, I set up a new little, uh, I set up a new little shooting game for myself. And so I got this little P365. I got it in my pocket right now. But this P365, I freaking love this gun. I've had this gun for many years. I must have shot, uh, like a thousand rounds through it. But, uh, I've had this gun for maybe a four or five years. And I must have shot, uh, a thousand rounds through it. And uh, I freaking love this thing. I, I really do. This is, you know, I traded in a Glock 19 for this. Uh, for this, I traded in a Glock 19 for this. For this P365, and I freaking love this thing. I, I didn't really like the Glock, but I love my Sig P365. I've had this thing for four or five years, 
And uh, yesterday I set up a new shooting game for myself. It's iron sights, so it doesn't have an optic ready slide on it or anything. I've been thinking about maybe buying myself an optic ready slide. But I set up a new little shooting game for myself. I got a brick out here. I'm gonna open this gate up. But one of my uh, my New Year's resolutions things, well, I'm, I don't even have New Year's resolutions. I took a look at, uh, I, I just need, I, I just understand that deep down I need to lose some weight. I understand that. I lost, uh, I lost a couple pounds. I think it was like two, three pounds or something. And so I told myself, you know, I need to lose some weight. I really do. I see a lot of people, a lot of people with, you know, I, I must have seen a dozen people in the last uh, six months who are just missing a leg. They've had a leg amputated. They got an amputated leg. Like, give me one second. I got to open the gate up. I've seen maybe, probably close to 12 people in the last six months, and they got an amputated leg. And every time, every time that they got an amputated leg, it, it's be, it, it was because of diabetes. All of them. All of them. 100% of them. It's like this person got an amputated leg, that person got an amputated leg, this person got an amputated leg, that person got an amputated leg, my cousin got an amputated leg. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I'll be talking to somebody and they'll say, man, you know, my, my cousin got his leg amputated last week. And it's always because of diabetes, always, 100%, all the time. And so I'm like, man, I don't want, you know, uh, I don't want to have, uh, you know, ma major health problems you know because of my weight when i get older and so i understand that i need to lose some weight and so yesterday i set up a new shooting game for myself and so i got a little brick out here and i got a little brick out here and i've been shooting at it and yesterday i shot at it i shot at it uh, I, I shot two magazines at it 24 rounds and i hit it uh i hit it 11 times and so what I'll do is I'll uh, come up here and I'll set this brick up. I'll set this brick up like this. This brick right here. This brick right here. I don't know what's going on with this brick, but uh, I actually hit it dead square in the center one time. You can actually see where the round impacted right here, where the round hit it. And it didn't and it didn't shatter the brick. But you can tell that I've been shooting this thing. Uh, you know, the top's missing, the side's missing, this side's missing, this corner's missing. This corner's missing. This back's missing. This been cracked right here. And I hit it right there in the square in the center. Here's a part of the brick right here. But I'll, I'll just set it up like this. And I'll shoot at it. I'll take 50 steps back. So I'll go about 35 yards away. 30, 35 yards away. And I'll shoot at it. And anytime I knock it over, I'll just come up here. And I'll pick the brick back up. And I'll shoot it again. And so... Uh, Yesterday, I shot 24 times and I hit it 11 times. I also had a water bottle out here that I was shooting. And these are the other rocks that I was shooting at. I've been shooting at these. Uh, I just shoot at these little rocks. You know, these little rocks. And, uh, you know, because aiming an iron sight pistol, aiming an iron sight pistol, especially a small 9mm, it's very difficult, right? And so I'll take a 50 steps back. So I'll go about 30, 35 yards away. And I'll just shoot it with my iron sight pistol. And uh, and every time I hit it, I'll, uh, I'll just go back over there and I'll pick it up. I pick the brick back up and then I'll just shoot it again. And so I end up walking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it, it's a good little, it's a good little uh, thing. I, I mean, I have fun doing it. It's, 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 uh, it's fun for me. I like doing it and it's good for my health. And I figure it's gonna help me lose. Uh, until I get bored of doing that, I will do it. Uh, you know, and then when I get bored, I'll make another game for myself. But uh, the grass, I don't know if y'all can tell on the camera, but it's already started to green up a little bit. It has started to green up a little bit. And it is uh, visibly growing. It's only it's 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 you know it hasn't really rained at all, but nitrogen can also be uh, absorbed. Uh, nitrogen is one of the few. Uh, I don't know if uh, I don't know exactly what what is going on, uh, but uh, I don't know if it's like the the sunlight hitting the grass at a certain angle or something. But my grass, it does look like it has slightly greened up a bit, and I know. Uh, 
Well, I'll have to see. And I know that, uh, that there's some water on the field right now, some atmospheric water on the ground right now because of the atmosphere, uh, uh, the dew point or whatever it's called. But I think I'm already noticeably seeing a, 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 a darker green on the plants. And so, uh, yep. That's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.